And uh, the theme now is how to mot motivate people with God's grace in our sermons. So this is application to preaching. Now let me first explain the opposite. The opposite is motivation, uh, motivating people with the law in the sermons. Now motivating people with the law in the sermons is always telling people you have done some things wrong, you have sinned, you have offended God, and you must repent and obey now. <clears throat> now those things are biblical, but it lacks one thing that the Bible gives us all the time. It's grace, motivation by grace. That the Bible does have a lot of that. But some people preach in a way that is secular, worldly. Because the world, uh, you know, the ways of the world is to tell people you've done wrong, you, you have to change. Uh, so it's a lot of people preaching, uh, preaching like that. That is telling people you've done wrong, you have, you have to obey, you have to turn away from your sins, you have to start to obey and you have to uh, pray and do evangelism and all these things. Now that, those are true, but when people are just told that they are, you know, they are sinning and they, they, uh, they have to, they have to do this, they have to do that, always use the word have to. So I, I encourage you not to use the word have to in your sermons, but to tell them how good God is, how God is happy with us when we obey Him. And when we obey Him, our life will go higher and higher, and God will remember everything we do for Him. That way, people are more motivated, and also people will enjoy serving God. And, and we ourselves are doing that ourselves, that we always say, I'm helping these people, God is happy with me. Now, I'm not perfect yet, I'm not perfect, but when I'm trying to obey God, I'm trying to do things God tell, uh, told me to do, I will, you know, I know that God is happy. Therefore, I'm happy to preach the messages. I'm happy to serve God. Okay, now this is my suggested outline. You don't have to follow this outline all the time, but it's a outline that you can follow at least for now until you grow uh, uh, and then you can use different outlines, but still always have the grace of God and also how to change. Actually, the three parts here I suggest that we always have is God's grace, God's uh, nature and grace, and then a reminder and warning. We need that too. And then how, how can we change, okay? So <clears throat> in a sermon, we can follow this outline that First, we have the interpretation of the biblical passage. We explain the passage. And then examples. That means negative and positive example. Now, why do I put negative examples first? That I will let people know that uh, even though the Bible tells us, for instance, to, be, uh, to love people. Now, if we use the, the, the theme to love people as ourselves, then I will use this example, uh, the negative side, to remind people that uh, that you know it is true that many Christians don't love. Now it's possible to start with positive examples too. It depends on on, uh, on the situation and your uh, your thinking. Now when I start with telling people about the problems of the of many Christians, doesn't mean I'm saying you are no good. It's just saying. Okay, let me demonstrate this. I can say, okay, today the theme is love people as ourselves. Now, it's true that the Bible tells us to love each other, to love people, to accept people. But it's also a fact that many people go to church and then they find that uh, the people are not so caring. Many people don't even talk to them. They don't welcome them. They don't talk to them. Sometimes some people have gone to a church and no one greets them and they just stay in the church and then go home. So they're not, um, they don't experience the care and the love of the, of the Christians. And, or sometimes 
Christian, they stay in the church for a period of time already, but they don't love each other. They don't care for each other. And what happens is then the church is, is cold. When people come to the church, they don't get motivated. So that is example to let people know that even though the Bible tells us to, to love each other, but it's the fact that many Christians don't love each other. And then the positive example, now we don't have to put it here. We can put it in different places in a message. For instance, sometimes we, we talk about how we can talk about some Christians love. But here we can put it here too. That, uh, for instance, that uh, for myself, when I first went to church the first time, uh, after you know I became an, a young adult, I was impressed with how the people listen to me, they respond to me, they care about me, and that attracts me to come back again. So that's, um, that's a good example that I have met many Christians who are loving. That motivates me to, to love God more and to build up the body of Christ. So these are uh, the negative and positive example. And why? Why do many Christians don't have love? Now the Bible tells us to, to love each other and we all have the Holy Spirit. Why do many Christians don't have much love? Well, because many Christians are still selfish. They're still controlled by the sinful nature. They just follow the natural way. The natural way is just to care about themselves and not to care about people. So those are the natural ways of people. So people just follow the natural instinct. And some people are shy and they don't want to change. And uh, the church also did not train the people to, to love each other, how to love each other, how to care about pe other people. And uh, also, <clears throat> of our sinful nature, people want to get things for themselves. They, people, are, uh, even Christians, are selfish. They want to get things for themselves. They don't want to, to change. And also, they had some experience of being rejected by people and therefore they don't they don't love now why do I have this uh, introduction so that people know that even though the Bible tells us to love is the fact that many Christians don't love they for instance actually one area one place that they don't love much is in the family many Christian children they say that the parents the parents are Christian but when they go home, they yell at each other, they fight against each other, and they don't see the love of God in the family. Now, many Christians, even pastors, sometimes they yell at the family members instead of loving them and guiding them because people think they have a wrong thinking that when people have done something wrong, they then uh, we should yell at them and punish them because that's the, the worldly way. The worldly way is to follow the law that many Christians live under the law and so they they just they're angry with other people because they're not doing well so they follow that way so that's the reason why okay and then second uh, and then we have God's nature and love and grace God's nature is that he is full of love you can see his love in people he created that uh, as uh, human beings Mothers and fathers have natural instinct to love their babies, to love the children. Now, but we are not perfect because of our sinful nature. Therefore, when we try to love, we still have a lot of shortcomings. That's why when the children grow up and disobey, many parents uh, don't love as much. They don't accept the children as much and they yell a lot. They use the law. Actually, when people use the law, then um, it will take away the love. When they live in grace, then they have more love. But because many Christians, they don't, have the, they don't live under the grace of God. But God is full of grace and mercy. And when many people believe in Jesus, they, know, they experience the love of God come into them. They experience the comfort and the acceptance of the Holy Spirit. So God, is, His nature is, is love. And also his grace. Now, what is the difference between nature and grace? Nature is his quality. Grace is 
what he does for us that he gives love to us he gives us the ability the motivation to love people now when christian have a good relationship with god god then god would change us when i first believe in jesus i realize that salvation is so important and there is heaven and hell so i told all the people around me about jesus i was greatly motivated to love them to care about them to tell them about jesus and i noticed this motivation by the holy spirit and all christians have that so god is doing that work but the fact is many christians don't have a close relationship with god and so they don't have a strong motivation and also they are they they're controlled by their problems they look at the problems and they say that well god doesn't love me god doesn't care about me god is not uh god is not helping me so they they don't have a close relationship with god therefore they have don't they don't receive that motivation from the holy spirit to uh, to love people so that's god's grace grace means what he does for us nature is his inner nature god has the inner nature of love and acceptance his grace is he will change us he will give us new nature to love he will remind us to love he will give us the motivation and the spiritual gift so that we can help people and counsel people and love them and also whenever we love people god is very happy even when we give a cup of cold water god is god is very happy okay and then god changes us many people are there a very uh, cold in the natural uh the, the nature in the natural nature they are very cold but God can change some people, even though they were at first very cold, but God changes them so that they become warm to people and loving to people. This is also God's grace. Now, so we need to have creativity to discover God's grace. <clears throat> so, but we can talk about in a few areas. First, God is His nature. He can give it to us. He can teach us how to use it. He gives us the spiritual gift to use it. And also he will reward us. He remembers how we love people and then reward us. So this can apply to different messages we have. That God, that God has that nature. He gives us that nature. He gives us the ability, the spiritual gift to use that, that, uh, to use that nature, to live out that nature. And also he will reward us. So you can at least have these few points. Uh, I will demonstrate that later with other themes, okay? And then, reminder and warning. Now, the Bible does tell us that, you know, for those who don't love the brothers, you know, then they don't have eternal life in them. So that, that's the worst scenario. When a person doesn't love people at all, that means he can be spiritually dead or spiritually very weak. If a Christian has zero love, so we want to repent and there is warning if a person doesn't have close relationship with God and he doesn't love other people, they could face the discipline and the judgment of God. So we need to tell people that, yes, there is consequences. There are consequences when people don't love people. And that's why many churches become very weak because they don't love each other. So when we will shepherd a church, we want to love them so that people will learn to love each other. They, they really learn to appreciate each other and be kind to each other. That way they will grow. And then, how? So how can we, it's very important to tell people how. First, we need to have a close relationship with God because then God will give us the nature to love. So we repent of our sins of not loving people and, and ask God to forgive us. And then we ask God, please give us the motivation, give us the ability to love people, Give us the wisdom to love people uh, and then and then we obey the holy spirit to take steps to care about people first maybe to overcome our our re, uh, reluctance to love maybe there are reasons we don't want to love because we have been hurt by other christians so we don't want to love then we repent and turn away from those sins and say lord please forgive me i want to change i want to love people and also we need to learn we need to learn from other people how to love, how to care about people, how to listen to people, how to be kind to people, 
how to um, how to help people spiritually. All these are ways to love people. And then at the same time, one way is very important. Whenever we do this, we, whenever we obey God, we should remind ourselves, God is very happy with me now when I'm obeying God now. I'm not saying we're proud. We're not saying we have done enough. But whatever we have done, God is happy and God is blessing me. Therefore, I can be serving God joyfully. I can be loving God joyfully. So we tell people exactly how to have the close relationship with God so we have more love and then we change our nature. If we have uh, reluctance to love people, we have bad feelings toward people, those need to be taken care of uh, with inner healing. Maybe that person needs to be healed of his hurts in the past because he has been hurt in the past. Therefore, it's hard for him to, to love other people. Then we need to repent and say, Lord, Please help me. I've been hurt by other people. Therefore, it's hard for me to love other people. Please help me to first appreciate how some people love me. Some people love me. Therefore, I see their love and I see that it's precious. Therefore, I start to learn to overcome my fear, overcome my reluctance to love people and to be healed by Jesus. When I love God more, He will heal my inner soul so that I have more freedom, I have more joy, more strength to love people. So we need to help people to, to be healed and then take steps. First, we just greet people. We just say hi to them, listen to them, respond to their needs, care about them. And after they tell us something about themselves, we can pray for them. And the next time when we see them, we can ask them <coughs> how they are now. Have, um, <coughs> how's the situation now? Has the condition improved? <clears throat> and then so we can care for people and help them. That's, that's loving them. And then we can notice that whatever area they are lacking, we can help them to grow. That way they are growing as a Christian. Then we are loving this person. Okay? So this is a, an example. Now I give you more example now <clears throat> of preaching. And I, show you, I hope you follow this. <clears throat> The main thing that we are motivated by God's grace and therefore we can motivate other people. So we use Matthew 10, 41 to 42 and then have this outline. And this verse says, <coughs> Whoever in the name of the prophet except receive a prophet will receive the reward of the prophet. And also whoever in the name of a righteous man that receive the righteous man shall receive the reward of the righteous man. And then the last verse says, Who, whoever of you, uh, because of, uh, in the name of a disciple, that he give one, uh, a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, truly I tell him that he will by no means lose his reward. So in these three verses, now I want to uh, explain this. Uh, actually, in these two verses, I want to explain it. First, Jesus said that, okay? Now, <clears throat> if you are not a perfect, a, a prophet, but you seize a prophet, when you receive the prophet, even though you're not a prophet, when you are nice to him, you help him, then you will receive his reward. Wow, that is very good. Now, many people are not prophets. But when you can see a prophet, or a pastor, a, a missionary, when you receive that pastor, missionary, or prophet, then you receive his reward. So that's, that's really great. Even though you're not as great as the prophet, you can receive his, spirit, uh, his reward when you are nice to him. And then if you cannot find a prophet, if you find a righteous man, someone who, is, who loves God, and you are nice to him, you help him, you receive him, then you receive his reward. So, even though you are not as righteous as he is, but when we receive him, we we'll receive his reward. And then you don't find a prophet, you don't find a righteous man, you just find a little one, a little Christian, that you receive 
this little question now from Mark 9:41 because it says that you know if someone because you belong to Christ give you a cup of water so we know that this is talking about doing it to a person who belongs to Christ <clears throat> or you do it to a non-Christian in you know, order to bring him to believe in Jesus so either because he's a Christian or because you want to bring him to Jesus you give him a cup of water you by no means lose your reward so even if you find don't find a prophet or you don't find a righteous man you just find a little one a little Christian you do it you give a cup of cold water you by no means lose the reward or you try to bring a non-Christian to be a Christian and you be nice to him and then you by no means lose the reward also so this three verses tell us that whatever we do for God to any person in the name of God that we do it to glorify God even to a non-Christian we glorify God and tell them about Jesus then you are doing it in the name of a disciple then you by no means lose your reward and also even when we're not such a great person but we do it to a great person to a great Christian will also receive his reward so that tells us that God doesn't necessarily see the quantity of our reward of our good works or how great we are but God sees that we're doing things for God in God's name to bless his people God is very happy to reward us so many people might go to heaven and say wow I didn't know that God is giving me so much reward because I've been nice to other Christians I've been nice to the pastor to the missionary to anyone any Christian and I've been nice to the non-Christian to help them believe in Jesus even though I'm not a preacher I'm not a evangelist but God is rewarding me as he rewards the pastor or the evangelist so that is a great news for us that's motivation to us that means God has this nature he re he appreciate every little thing we do for people how we are kind to people God will observe that notice that and then God will put it into his record book he will record what we have done for him and we'll receive his reward that is wonderful that is wonderful news because God accepts every little thing we do for him and he specially sees that when we do it to his children to his pastors, to his righteous men and little ones, he is very happy when we do any good thing to his <clears throat> children. That's why I'm motivated to serve God. I'm motivated to serve God. I know that God is very happy with that. And now I'm not doing it for the reward. I just want to do it because I love God. I want to serve God. I want to do things to please God. Okay? Now, how do we preach this? Now, just now I demonstrate also already the, the, uh, to explain the passage now here we talk about uh, God's grace now first actually we can talk about his nature his nature is that he appreciates he has a nature of appreciation he appreciates what we do to his prophets righteous men and little ones so he appreciates everything and remembers he has this quality of appreciation and remembering and then grace God treasures the prophets the righteous men and the little ones and the little ones and he wants to bless them so when people do good to them God will reward them so God uh, sees that we treat the prophets and righteous men and the little ones nicely then God is very happy and he will reward us and God give us the motivation and the strength to bless these people so God give us this motivation in the uh, the Holy Spirit will motivate us to love other people to care for other people to be kind to them so God is giving us that motivation that is the grace of God he changes us so that we'll care about other people and the strength and the wisdom to care about people and then grace even when we sincerely do a small thing for God he's very happy and he will reward us richly so any any little thing we do for him he's very happy why why many Christians don't do good to others and the, uh, the negative examples is that 
Many Christians just don't do good. They just don't treat others nicely. They just go to church. They don't talk to people. They are not kind to people. Even sometimes they hurt other Christians. Now, what, one reason why people hurt other people is because they live under the law. They always accuse themselves and they accuse other people. They're always unhappy with people. So we need to learn from Jesus that we are kind to people. We count the goodness and we are happy with them. And so we want to bless them. We want to be nice to them. So that motivates us that uh, when we see the goodness of people, then we want to bless people. And also, even when they're not good, we see that, you know, they are ch children of God. Then we, we, we love them. But many Christians, they count the bl bad things of, of the other Christians. They say, oh, this pastor is not good. This uh, Christian is not good. Therefore, I cannot love them. So they just look at the bad things of other people. And then they keep thinking about the bad things and then they don't have love for them. Or some people are just selfish. And then warning, those who don't do good to other people, then, then uh, you know, if we don't do good to other people, then God will also not do good to us. That God will withhold the blessings from us. And how we can have stronger motivation to do good to God's servants and to any little ones. First, we want to have a close relationship with God so that God changes us, so that we are motivated to love God. So we're motivated to love people. We're motivated to be kind to people. And then we want to take care of our fear of people, our negative view of people. Sometimes Christians are negative about other people uh, because we've been hurt by people. Therefore, we have a negative view of other Christians. So we want to take care of that and say some people are negative, but not all people are negative. So we want to be nice to them. Even though I've been hurt by some of the Christians, I don't want to hurt these Christians now. I want to be nice to them. So the first is to take care of our hearts in the past. And the second is that we want to say, even if they are not good, I still I want to be nice to them. Even they are not wicked, I'll still not be nice to them. So that is overcoming wickedness with goodness even when people are not good i still care about them i still love them and uh and then we'll find ways uh, we start with the obvious things we can do when we go to church be nice to them talk with them listen to them be kind to them help people so whenever i go to church i always talk with people uh, even before i became a pastor I actually, when I first became a Christian and then I went to church and then I started to think now this is God causing me to think there might be in the church there are Christians who really don't believe in God or they doubt about the presence of God that, uh, that they don't think that there is God so I, I start going to church earlier and talk with the people and I stay after church and talk with the people and ask them and I found that many people are not sure about God and I'm not sure about the relationship with God. So I start to help them. And the more I help people, the more experienced I become. Then I learn how to help people. And then I was a teacher in a Christian school and I helped the st students. I, I took them to do evangelism uh, uh, on Saturday morning before the fellowship time. And also I have Bible study time in the lunch time to uh, help uh, to have Bible study with them, to, to study about salvation and, and study Bible passages. So I, as soon as I became a Christian, I started to care about other people. Then that's God's motivation. And also I learned from different pastors, different people, how to do it better, how to improve. And I thank God for that. And uh, also, another way is very important. Whenever we do these good things, we can remind ourselves, I'm doing good and God is very happy. So this is a um, slightly different outline, but it has those qualities that I just mentioned earlier, that we have the interpretation of biblical passage, and then we have examples and why. Negative and positive examples uh, are people who disobey and obey God. And why do they have these problems? And, and why some Christians have 
strong motivation. And God's nature and grace. Nature is His inner quality. Grace is what He does to us. So He give us the quality, the Holy Spirit, so that we can love. He motivate us to love. He give us the wisdom to love. He give us, uh, uh, help us to learn how to love. And He also reward us so we can be happy when we serve God. And the reminder and warning, if we don't love God, there will be consequences because it will destroy our life also. When people don't love each other, their family will not have love and the family will break down. Uh, their relationship with people will break down. They have problems. I have met Christians who don't love other people and they always have problems in the family, in a relationship with other, and with the place of work and in the church. And then how we can build that up. So that's that's uh, this example here. And then another passage, Matthew seventeen twenty. It talks about when we have faith like a mustard seed, we can move the mountain. 